what he did was clearly wrong, and he knows that. He wants me to apologize to the court and to these families. He wishes he hadn't done these things. Right. In reaching a sentence in this case, this, this, this case, this court has reviewed uh, the psychological evaluations referred to by Mr. Lake. The court has also reviewed the file in uh, this case, which is rather extensive. Uh, statements of counsel made here today, as well as statements made by um, either written or oral statements made by victims or family of victims in this case. Um, I've also obviously reviewed the sentencing guidelines and the statutes related to the guidelines. And before de imposing the actual sentence, uh, the court wants to um, make a general statement that, that is fairly obvious, um, but I think is one that needs to be made in the, it, it, at this time as well. The families and friends of these three victims, and, and Ms. Winter is one of the victims, and, and she obviously was... Uh, murdered in, in this scenario. Uh, the two other victims were uh, severely beaten with a hammer. But the families and friends of these victims and these victims and this community has been shocked by and shattered by the violent acts of the defendant. Uh, no sentence given today is going to bring Nicole Winter back, nor will today's sentence heal the pain and injury suffered by the two other victims. The sentence today and the court's intent in this sentence today is to render a sentence that will ensure that the defendant does not ever again pose a threat to this community. And the court hopes that there are programs and opportunities available within the correctional system in which the defendant uh, can have his issues addressed. Um, the first count for sentencing is the most serious count, it is count seven. It is the murder in the first degree. That offense, as Mr. Dunbar indicated, has been previously agreed is an off-grid felony, and it cannot be considered as the base count for sentencing purposes. Um, for the offense of murder in the first degree, uh, with a criminal history of E, the court sentences the defendant to a term of life with the Secretary of Corrections. Uh, the court has reviewed and has noted the uh, factors cited by Mr. Dunbar with regard to aggregating for a hard 50 in this case. And in the, the court finds, based on the nature, not just of the offense of, of killing, transporting, and of Nicole Winter's body, but with regard to the savage beating of the uh, individual's Christmas day, that being Jennifer Hughes and Michael Delaney, um, and let me back up because I want to make sure that the sentence refers only in this particular count. I, I do need to qualify that. The aggravating factors in this case relate only to the murder of Nicole Winter the transporting of her body, the breaking of the neck as described by Mr. Dunbar, and the burning of her body, that those factors are aggravating factors in this matter. And the court will order that the uh, hard 50 or 50 years be served, um, and obviously without deduction of any good time credit, but the defendant would not be eligible for any parole in that matter until after the serving of those 50 years. The, uh, if the defendant should be paroled at some point in that, the, the um, post-release supervision would be for the remainder of the defendant's life. The next count for sentencing is count two, which is the attempted murder in the first degree, a severity level one person felony with a criminal history of E. This count would be the base count for purposes of sentencing. Um, in this case, the court does look to the aggravated nature of the offense. And again, the uh, attempted murder of uh, Michael Joseph Delaney 
in count two and count three in Jennifer Hughes uh, that the factual pattern there is also uh, what the court would find aggravated. With regard to count two, the defendant is sentenced to a term of 246 months in the custody of Secretary of Corrections. The defendant may earn good time credit as provided by law in that case. The sentence in this count is to run consecutive to the life sentence previously ordered. Um, this is a grid sentence, and he shall not begin to serve this sentence unless and until he might be paroled from the off-grid offense. Also, based on the statutory change this summer that is retroactive to cases previously filed, post-release supervision this would also be life because it would be based on the off-grid crime. The next count for sentencing is count three, which is the other attempted murder in the first degree case. Again, a severity level one person felony with a criminal history of E. On that case, um, I'm sorry, I because of the I category. Thank you. Um, it would be the category I. The court sentences the defendant in that case to a term of 165 months in the custody of Secretary of Corrections, uh, counts as sentenced. It is the court's intent and the court's order that each of these sentences are to run consecutively to each other. Uh, the statute requires that, um, except for the off-grid felony, that uh, good time credit be provided uh, or earned, the calculation based on Statute court believes is up to 15% of each of those sentences, except for the off-grid felony to which no good time credit shall be reduced. The court in doing this uh, understands the defendant, based on the three evaluations, has significant problems. Um, however, the conduct the defendant has exhibited in, this, in these cases is one obviously that the um, evaluations may have been close, but none of them found the defendant incompetent either to stand trial or to proceed with this case. We are at a point where in whatever help the defendant may get, may get in custody, and the citizens of Shawnee County and the family members here can be assured the defendant um, will not be a threat uh, in the future. I don't think it's been done. The court will order DNA and palm printing to be done while the defendant's in custody. Anything other than that, Mr. Dunbar? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Lake, anything else? No, Your Honor. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do um, before we adjourn, I want to make sure that all of you stay put. I'm going to ask that the uh, jail staff uh, escort the defendant back to his cell. And you will be allowed to leave once the officers uh, open the doors again. We are adjourned. Thank you.